So Lux and I were talking about this a bit yesterday, but um, how did you guys meet? We met on a job. She works in uh, production design, set design, prop styling, wardrobe, and uh, I was hired to do a job which never ended up seeing the light of day, but I still got paid and I met her. But I asked him out, so. So we went on a few dates. We uh, did things pretty responsibly and conventionally. Well, yeah, she said you guys never kissed before you moved in together. Well, uh, <laughs> well the, the, day I, there, the day of our first kiss, we essentially moved in together. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's how I joked about it, okay. yeah. Right. We, we took, yeah, a whole month of dating and, you know, no physical action, which was, you know. But yeah, this first kiss, and then we kissed each other's peepees, <laughs> and we lived together ever since. Oh, there you go. <laughs> All right, so we're here at the Gentle Barn. Mm -hmm. um, you guys obviously want to build your own animal sanctuary. How did the idea for it come about? I was in Morocco with uh, my buddy Scott Randolph, and, and I was like, man, I, I feel like I'm getting some traction again in my career. I feel like things are going well. I already have more than I need. Lux and I don't want kids. And, and why not, by the way? Ah, uh, can you imagine? How long is this interview? <laughs> <laughs> well, because, I, and Lux and I were talking about this yesterday, your dad, uh, Ted, said to me, like, I, I wonder if they're, you know, putting forth the passion that people would have towards kids of their own, sure. towards uh, animals. But he said you guys have talked about that a lot, and yeah. he's tried to convince you otherwise, and has since given up on that. Right. Yeah. It, it was, uh, I want to say about 15 years ago, I said to my dad, Dad, I got this great idea, uh, the vasectomy Olympics. You know, like I'm gonna, and he didn't even get that far and he was just became super serious and, and uh, concerned. He said, don't do it. Like, uh, if it weren't for you and your sister, my life wouldn't be uh, as enriched. And I'm like, Dad, you got kind of lucky with me. You know? <laughs> You're pretty close to it all being a terrible heartbreak. Um, but yeah, he feels strongly about that, that later in life having children, uh, you know, is important. And um, I think most people feel that way, but I just can't relate to that. I've never wanted kids. I've never had that desire. Um, wanted any kids, let alone one like me. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds awful. <laughs> yeah, that's what your dad said. He like, wondered if you thought that if you ended up with one like you that you just didn't want to deal with uh, how much of a handful. The karma of that. <laughs> right, and it was my dad who said that, you know, based on uh, you know, the lineage, particularly my mom's side of the family with alcoholism and drug abuse, and he said that uh, th these problems for me, having children, would be like playing Russian roulette with a loaded gun, like a completely loaded gun. Like I'm definitely going to end up with like really problematic offspring, I think. Not like, to mention, you know, the huge commitment having kids is financially, you know, probably the most expensive thing you'll ever do. And um, I have, you know, a lot planned for myself and none of that has ever included kids. And I don't know, I feel like if I ever got to the point of feeling like I actually wanted to like take care of another human. Um, adopt. Know, yeah, adopt or foster. Right. And, you know. There's enough people uh, in need. Right. Like, why, why create more need? Yeah, this planet's a little, <laughs> a little overpopulated already, and you know. So in a way, there is some selfishness to it, and then in, in a way, there's some, you know, humanity to it. So you were in Morocco. Right. I was in Morocco. I was in Morocco, and I said to my buddy Scott, I was like, man, you know, like, I think uh, I feel things starting to, you know, like, work out, kind of, you know, like uh, I feel like my career is, is, uh, you know getting momentum and, and uh, you know, Lux and I don't want to have kids and um, I already have like everything that I need. I think, uh, and it was Scott that said, you should open up an animal sanctuary. And like my head exploded, I just got so excited. What was your reaction when he brought it up to you? I was thrilled. I've always wanted to, to have a ranch as a retirement plan, which isn't necessarily a retirement plan, but the idea of, of having that before I even retire is, yeah, that's a dream, so I'm, I'm thrilled. Perfect world, what would be the plan for the ranch or the sanctuary? We want to have it in Southern California so we can drive to it. We also want uh, the zoning to allow for it to have a bed and breakfast so that we can make it kind of a destination 
uh, you know, come and hang out. Like, we want to have, like, go-kart tracks for kids and stuff like this. Uh, so that the traffic can bring in revenue to run the place and that while the people are there, that they can have a meaningful encounter with an animal or a bunch of animals so that as they look into that animal's eyes, they can maybe wonder, what am I doing eating this thing? You know, like, like maybe uh, like they can start thinking that way a little bit. And um, ultimately in success, I want to... Uh, expand and, and uh, the bed and breakfast piece turned into a home for people with special needs. Um, particularly because my nephew uh, has both Down syndrome and autism. And my sister, um, who's a single parent, has bestowed on me the responsibility of uh, becoming the legal guardian for her kids if anything happens to her. When she first told me that, I freaked out. and. Uh, I agreed to it, but I freaked <laughs> out. And uh, I think she's under a lot of stress with, uh, with her career. And, you know, Dylan is at his uh, size and an age that daycare just won't accept him. He loves breaking things. So my sister's forced to work from home, and uh, her, her whole career, I think, is tenuous. Mm -hmm. So if, the, if our ranch became a nonprofit and my sister was in charge of the administration, that could solve her, uh, her career issues and if uh with the help of the of the staff of, of the sanctuary i mean just the help caring for dylan it would relieve such a a load off of her shoulders and uh and lux's family is super into the whole thing so it's uh like both of our families are all over it right. and uh long term i mean it's one stop shopping to take care of my nephew's future my sister's career and and uh and our legacy right and so you started dating january 2017 as i understand it you will not get married until you can get married on, our on land. your animal right. that's the sanctuary idea. Yeah. yeah we want to buy our land and that's where we want to get married and that's all we know about anything with the wedding